And as promised, let's progress to level four. Let's practice something. How do we generate the component? Well, in that case, it's pretty simple because it's already here on the screen, as you can see it here. So we simply do the same and say level four. Please do that, add level four. With tests or? We don't need tests, right. so you can either delete them afterwards or you can uh, immediately say skip tests. So help me, what do we have to do in order to add this level four to our menu system? Where do I have to make changes? Yes? In the app routing Correct, correct. I simply copy level three and I say level four, level four, use the uh, light bulb to add the import and we are good. We can try it, go to level four, level four works. Now what is, what is this level four all about? It's about services. Let me show you what the service can do. For our application, I want to add a board service. Let's create the service and then I will tell you why we create a service and what a service really can do for you. Please do the same as before, but this time don't say ng generate component, but say ng generate service level four slash board. And if you want, you can immediately say skip tests. I will zoom in so you can see it better. See? The difference is before we used generate component and now we use generate service. You see the difference here? ng generate service level four board, skip tests. Run it. That will give us a new file inside of level four, the board service TypeScript. Good. If we take a look at the board service, then we will see that this is a regular class. The rule is the following. In a service, we put logic. To be more specific, now uh, yeah, let's just write logic. Business logic, data access logic, logic that does not relate to the user interface. It's just logic, just calculations, just data access. Nothing to do with the user interface. Understood? In our case, the maintenance of the tic-tac-toe board, the content of the board, the logic for setting something on the board, the logic for finding out the winner. This is what I want to have in the service. And then we have our components, which we already know, our components. And these components contain the view, HTML, CSS, and the view logic. Logic that is just related to the view. For instance, translating the player index one to a certain CSS class. The CSS class is part of the view. It defines whether this thing should be red or blue. And this logic for translating something into red and blue is part of the view logic. But calculating the winner is part of the business logic. And that should be in the service. Yes? Does that mean that some of the class R functions we defined earlier would be in the service? Absolutely, and this is what we are going to do in level four. In level four, we are going to rip apart the entire level three TypeScript file. And we think with every function, we think about, is it part of the view or is it part of the logic question? We solved the problem. You simply forgot the NPX. Let me show you what this NPX is all about. Today in the morning, I told you that the ng command is really stored where? Can anybody remember? In which folder? Yes? Node modules and, then and? Dot bin. Correct. In the dot bin folder, we have this ng command. And the problem that you had is that Angular didn't find the ng command. So what you could have done 
you could have said node modules dot bin ng. But this is pretty complicated. This is a lot of text. And what I showed you is that you can simply say npx ng and that will do exactly the same. npx will look into the node modules dot bin folder and look for the script there. And that's it. Now again, the service contains the logic and the component contains the view. So the question is, how gets the component an instance of the service? And this process is called dependency injection. Have you ever heard about that? Yes. yes? Have you done that in any other course? Yes. In which course? Java? Java. Java? OK, good. Dependency injection. Now, there are multiple approaches to dependency injection in different languages. Um, one approach, and this is the approach of Angular, is the so-called constructor injection. So take a look here. The board service is just a class, right? So if we have a component that needs an instance of the board service, the component can simply go to the constructor and ask Angular to give it an instance of the service. So we can simply say private or public, it doesn't matter in this case, uh, board, board service. Note, I press enter to generate the necessary import statement up here above. Got it? And now when Angular instantiates the level four component, it will first create an instance of board service and inject the board service in the constructor. And with that, we have a very clear separation. Does anybody uh, enjoy to eat uh, spaghetti? I do. Spaghetti code is code where everything is mixed together. Data access, business logic, user interface, input output, all this stuff. This is spaghetti code. Everything is intertwined. And you have probably heard in previous courses that our goal is to untangle spaghettis. So we want to have a part of the spaghetti uh, where, that is just data access, a little part that is just user interface, a little part that is just logic to make your program easier to maintain and understand. And this is exactly what this is all about. We want to separate things. Board just logic. Component, just user interface. And with this constructor injection, the user interface can access the logic. The service here has no idea which components exist. The components, on the other hand, they have an idea which services exist. In theory, I could take this board service and I could use it in any other application. I can use it in a React application. I can use it in a Swift application. I can use it on the server side. It doesn't matter. It does not relate to the browser and the user interface at all. I'm simplifying here a bit. There are services that can, for some cases, implement UI logic, but this is something for advanced, advanced courses. For now, we have a clear distinction between logic and UI. Let's give it a try. Let's make it very simple. Let's make very simple first steps. Let's go into board service. Please do that. And in board service, I want you to, um, to define three very simple fields. X number, let's define this as one. Y number, this is one. And let's define R number, and in this case we say this is two. <coughs> and then we add, just for demo purposes, a little bit of business logic. We say we make an add method, and this add method says this.r like result equals this.x plus this.y. That is business logic. Do you see any relation to user interface? Class names, style names, nothing, right? Now what are we going to do in the component file? Just one output. That would be too complicated. Board.r. 
This is what I want to have. Here, we have the component. Board is the board service. The board service offers a property R, and that contains the value 2. See? And this is why I can, in HTML, say board.r. We reach into the service and display the result. Let me first show it to you. Yeah, sure. Here, level 4, 2, works. Now let's change these values a little bit. Maybe we can uh, say the r just for demo purposes. Let's make it 200. And it should change to 200. That is not special. But now I will define another requis a requisite, another, um, another requirement. This is what I wanted to say. The result should be read if it's higher than 100. Is this business logic or view logic? The result should be read if it's higher than 100. View, view logic, exactly. Why? Because it influences how this value is displayed. Understand? So the if statement, where I return red or black, black for values lower 100 and red for values higher 100, it should not be part of the service. It should be part of the component. So what I do is I can write here a small little helper method, get color, and I put it in the component. I put it in the component, not in the service. And here I simply say, yeah, okay, it, it suggests something which a little bit makes sense. Let's say 100, then it should be red, otherwise it, sh it should be black. We should use CSS styles if you want to make it perfect, and we will do that in the tic-tac-toe example, but for now that should be very clear. And in HTML, we can simply define with a binding, can I remember, style.color, and here we just say get, how did I call it, color? And that's it. And now we can play with the value. 200 is red, see? If I go into the service and make it 99, the value should be black. The business logic, I know I repeat myself, this one, independent of the UI is in the add method. And it's in the service. The view logic, which influence uh, which influences the logic of the view or the appearance of the value is in the component. If you think, hey, how should I remember that this style color exists? The answer is again the cheat sheet. Take a look at the Angular cheat sheet and there you will find exactly that one. And we're going to practice it. You will remember that. Believe me. Yes. Okay. Exactly. If I remove that one, it doesn't work. It doesn't work because the board is no longer stored inside the component. Okay. Yeah. If I write private in front of it, then it's fine here, but, but it doesn't work here anymore. Yeah. If I write public in front of it, it works here yeah. and here. Sure. If you want, you can delete it. Okay. ng on init uh, will be used once we start using services, web services. Okay. This is not a keyword as in keyword in TypeScript, it's a concept. Okay. The concept is called service in Angular. Okay. Angular uses the terms component and service. Component is a visual user interface component. Service is just a container, a class for business logic or data access logic. Okay. So it's not a keyword, it's okay. really a concept. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You mean that one? Yeah. Okay. Um, that is a little bit difficult and I will not go into very much details, but um, the reason why this stands here on top of it is that uh, we want to avoid putting the, uh, the services in the app module here. This is what we want to avoid. Um, this here just says this thing is injectable. I told you the term is um, dependency injection. So this, the fact that this can be injected results from the fact that you have the injectable here. We could go into very much details what this provided in means. Mm, 
Let me simplify it for you. Currently, we have a single Angular module and it contains all our components. Provided in controls which module the thing is injectable. So in, to which module does this service belong to? Yeah. So for now, for this course, for this year, we will stick to single module Angular applications. If we have each other uh, next year, we will build multiple module applications and then we will talk more about the details here. For this year, just accept what is generated and it will simply work. Let's think about what's going to happen. Uh, if we take a look at the routing module, here we define a route. So what we can do inside of our browser, we can specify the URL here. Yeah. Now let's, let's think for a moment what Angular has to do when it gets this level four thing. It has to look through the table and finds, oh, level four is implemented by level four component. Yeah. So I have to create an instance of the level four component. Somewhere in Angular, it has to say new level four component. But wait, we have a problem because the level four component requires a parameter in the constructor. So we don't just can say new level four component, that doesn't work. Yeah. Because we have to pass in a board service. Yeah. And this is what's meant with injectable. Uh, injectable means that Angular says, okay, I know that before I create level four component, I have to also have a board service available in order to give it to the level four component. So it takes a look at the board, board service and looks up the constructor of the board service. It finds the constructor and is pretty happy because this constructor has no more dependencies. So it can create a board service and inject this board service as a parameter in the constructor of the next component. But this can be way more complicated. This service could inject another service and this service could inject another service. This could go down the rabbit hole. It could be a really deep hierarchy of dependencies. And Angular will find out who needs whom and create these things correctly and pass in, inject the dependencies correctly. And if I remove the, the injectable, in, it's, it's a... Let's try it, let's try it. I remove the injectable. And if I go here and open that one, it's white. Nothing is here anymore. And if I go to the development tool, it says, uh-oh, no provider for board service. The problem is, you see it here, da, 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 that the, where do we have it? Where do we have it? The app module, do we see that anywhere? Yeah, here. The level four component needs a board service and there is no provider for board service. Angular doesn't know about the existence of the board service. So, we get an error. S this is a typical indicator that we need to add this one or that we have screwed up with this one. We have deleted it. It's auto-generated. Don't worry about it. And this is exactly what I wanted you to show in level four. And now we are uh, at the end of the lesson. It was a good timing. So, thank you very much. And don't forget the homework. Level uh, two of the tic tac sorry of the connect four exercise until next week and then you can practice the things with level three and four and so on the week after okay good thank you very much enjoy the rest of the week enjoy the weekend and we'll see each other next week